Welcome to this video tutorial on how to work with and render 3D trees in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video we're going to look at how to import in these detailed tree models into our scenes, how to convert these to V-Ray proxies to keep the file size of our scenes low while retaining that quality of the geometry of our tree, and also how to render and texture these trees as well. I'm going to be using the VizPeople 3D tree package you can download from their website and I'll put a link to the description of this package you can download in the video. This contains 18 highly detailed tree models which you can get for free and these are really good for rendering and adding to your scenes. Now to start we're going to import in our tree model and to do that I've just made this scene here and we're going to go to file import and we're going to select one of these tree models and we'll hit open there. We're then going to hit OK on the import settings and it will just load in the 3D model of our tree. And then you may need to rotate this into place once you have that model selected. Now once we've brought that tree in we can have a look and you can see that depending on the tree you've chosen you're going to get a very detailed mesh. All the leaves here are modelled, all the branches are modelled. We've got a kind of really detailed 3D model here. And this is great if we're using one or two trees, but when you start to copy these out and you have lots of these trees within your model, your file size is going to rapidly increase. Now luckily V-Ray has an option for dealing with this called the V-Ray proxy. And what this does is it allows us to take this highly detailed mesh and convert it into a simple polygon version of this mesh with a lot less faces that we can use as essentially a placeholder in our scene to allow us to have multiple low poly versions of the tree and then when it comes time to render that it will switch these low poly versions out for the highly detailed mesh for our render. So it allows us to keep our file size very low while retaining the quality of our highly detailed model within our renders. Now in order to use this function we're going to just select the whole tree here and we're going to group it together. And once that's grouped we're going to go up to our V-Ray toolbar and select export as V-Ray mesh. This can also be found under V-Ray and objects and export proxy. So when you select this option you're going to get this export proxy option here and we need to select the path it's going to export it to and I'm just going to use this folder I've set up here. And what it would do is it will export what's called a V-Ray mesh file, which is essentially the place where V-Ray will look when rendering to find that detailed model to load back in to your render. Now, the only other thing we need to look at here is this faces in preview, and I'm just going to keep this at 10,000. And that's going to be the number of faces in my preview model on my proxy. So we're going to hit export there, and it will load up. And what you'll see when it's done is we've then got this weird sort of simplified version of the tree which looks all distorted like the mesh is kind of broken apart. Now don't worry this will look like this in the viewport but if we load up our V-Ray asset editor we'll do a render preview of this tree using the V-Ray interactive render to have a look at the difference between the rendered version and the proxy version. And if I zoom in here you can see that the high poly tree is being loaded into the render but the low poly version is remaining in your Rhino file. And this is where you can see the V-Ray proxy in action. We've got the low poly version within our Rhino file, but the high poly version in the final render we're doing. Now what you'll notice is when I render this out is the tree has these sort of basic textures applied to it, which don't really match the accurate color or look of the tree. Now what we'll next do is we're going to try and texture this tree so it replicates the actual look of a birch tree that we want to try and show in our render. To do that we're going to have a look back in the asset editor and we're going to go to the materials section and what you'll notice is when you've loaded in your tree you get these default set of materials made for your tree there and if I click on this first one what this essentially is, is this is called a multi-material and it's a material that can hold multiple other materials within it. And essentially what this multi-material is, is the material for our whole tree. So I'm just going to call it whole tree there and that will contain all the other four materials that make up our tree. So under that we've got 0, 1, 2 and 3. And what we now need to do is work out which of these apply to which part of that tree. So the best way to do it is to select each material in turn, 
see which color is being applied to it. So you can see here this is a purple and then zoom in on the tree and try to decipher which color that is. Now in this case you can see that the trunk and the branches are kind of that same purple color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that purple and make it a bright red. And now you can see that that's actually applies to the trunk there. So once you know that we're going to just rename it trunk and essentially what I'm going to do is we're just going to go for each of these and rename them as to the kind of part of the model that they're referring to and if you're stuck or don't know which one is which you just make the color a bit brighter so you can see there so that's the stem this is the branch and which would leave this as the leaf there so now we know that we can now apply the correct textures to these materials now for this particular tree on this Viz People tree it came with a series of materials that we can use and these can be found with the download package you get and you'll see here we've got a series of kind of bark textures and also the leaf textures here. Now we're going to start with the leaf and all we need is this colour texture and uh, this alpha map here which tells us how the leaf is cut out of that mesh. So we're going to go back to our leaf material under diffuse I'm just going to minimize these windows and we're going to just hit on this small checkerboard map next to the diffuse color, select a bitmap and then we're going to locate that leaf texture there, drop that in and that will give it the color of the leaf we want. Now in order to cut this out and make it actually look like a leaf we'll then go to opacity, under opacity, open up bitmap again and then load in the alpha map for that opacity. And what we'll then do is we can do a little render preview. So now you can see that render is loading up, that the leaf has now been applied and we've got the correct color and the correct kind of cutout of the leaf too. Now it's quite hard to see sometimes depending on the view, but essentially because these leaves are gonna be so small that you really just need to get the kind of look and feel of the leaf from afar. Um, you might also want to add some reflection to that leaf if it wants to be a slightly shiny, leaf surface there as well and once you're happy with that we can then move on to the others and they're all quite straightforward with the trunk I'm just going to drop in that bitmap for the trunk texture and you can just select one of these that's come in or any trunk texture you're using for the tree and I'm going to actually use the same texture for the branch as well we'll just drop in one of these branch textures and for the stem of the leaf, I'm going to want this to be kind of the same color as the leaf. So I'm going to use the leaf texture for that one as well. So we'll just load in that leaf texture there into the stem. So essentially you can see the branch is using that bark texture. The leaf has got the leaf texture on. The stem is also using the leaf texture because it's going to be very thin and green. And the trunk is using the bark texture there. And with all of these added in, we can then go back to our model. And if we sort of zoom out, you'll then see here that your tree should be looking pretty good by that point. We've got all the kind of textures and colors on there. I'm just going to make this preview slightly larger so we can have a look at it. And you can see there our tree is working as intended with all the materials on. And if you want to go back and tweak the colors, you can just go back into your V-Ray Asset Editor find your tree material, find the correct one and tweak the settings of that material in there if you want to add a bump or any other material features on each of those characteristics of the tree. So that was the tutorial on how to load in and correctly render and texture a 3D tree in V-Ray for Rhino. In the next video we're going to be looking at how to take this initial tutorial and we're going to be turning this tree model into a whole forest of trees here and how the V-Ray proxies can be used in a really powerful way to create very detailed environments with very low file size within your files. So this is the kind of initial tutorial into loading those trees in and we'll be looking into more detail in the next video. So I hope you found this video useful and if you want to find any more videos on rendering or texturing objects in V-Ray and Rhino, please be sure to check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.